Well, more on the subject of my gays and Mormons weekends. I wanted to see if I could attract some fundamentalists to come in and try my experiment. So I put an advertisement in the giant nickel. Now to clue you youngsters in, uh, this was a primitive precursor to uh, Craigslist. And it was a little newspaper that was full of nothing but advertisements. On paper, if you can imagine, with black ink. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I put this ad in the giant nickel that said, uh, seeking Christians interested in testing the limits of their commitment to love their enemies. I think I only got one phone call and it was from this Pentecostal character and I described it to him he says well that does sound interesting would you describe it to my wife so about a half hour later his wife calls and she's got her best friend on the phone and so um, I describe it to them so this Pentecostal couple came to the weekend and they brought their Bibles they're going to set these gay folks straight on what the Word of God had to say about how they were living. And so we, um, they rode with me, which is probably a good thing, otherwise they might have gone home early. They rode with me up to uh, where we held most of these gatherings, which was uh, Lazy F, a Methodist church camp, had a lodge and nice kitchen and dining hall and everything so anyway uh, you know the mormons weren't gonna give me any property to do this thing on but the methodists they thought it was a, a pretty cool thing anyway so um i bring these folks they got their bibles friday night uh we're all together and uh you know they're they're kind of wary and maybe feeling a little hammered by all these gay folks and, and my God, Mormons too. And um, Saturday morning, they, you know, were starting to um, visit with the uh, gay folks, maybe even some of the Mormons. And by Saturday night, that couple was floating in a sea of love. They were loved by the gay folk and Sunday they just were ecstatic um, so I gave them a ride back home Sunday afternoon and I said uh, you think you'd want to do this again when I put another one together oh yeah, yeah yeah so I called him about a month later when I had put one together and he said uh, you know I've been thinking about it. I don't think I better do that and I said well um, can I try putting words in your mouth? And he said, yeah. And I said, okay, so you um, remember that the spirit of love that was present there Saturday night and Sunday was every bit as powerful as what you feel on Holy Roller Night uh, Wednesdays at the Pentecostal Church. He says, yeah. And I said, but... Your mind tells you that it couldn't possibly be the same because they were sinners. He says, yeah, that's right. And I says, well, go ahead and follow the guidance of your mind. And be, but someday I expect that you will come to trust your heart and uh, trust your sense of the Spirit to make adventurous choices as you did that weekend. Well, I never saw him again, but I'll be darned, his wife came three or four more times and one of them brought her best friend that was in on the phone call. And then over time, the wife began to sort of stray because uh, she, uh, at, uh, up to that point, you know, she wore this long denim dress powerful homely and they didn't play cards they didn't listen to uh, they didn't watch movies they were very careful about what music they listened to spent an awful lot of time at church but 
you know, she starts going to these gays and Mormons weekends, and um, so uh, there was a, a thing in the Tri Cities called impact training, and it was very emotion filled and sort of spiritual, and she finally did it, and she really loved it, and then uh, when the graduates of a particular course were led out of the room for the final time, uh, they were led next door to what was called a tunnel of love, where all previous graduates would um, create this gauntlet of love as the people were coming through, and I heard her greet this gay couple that she had really kept at a distance, but it, her heart just broke open to loving them and feeling their love. She finally left that husband and became an aer aerobic dance instructor, from long blue denim to aerobic dance instructor. And then she went off to Central Washington University and got a four-year degree and then she went over to Bellevue and got a job in a law firm as the managing secretary in the law firm. I was so proud of her and proud of the contribution that I think that I made to her. But then next I heard she'd gone back to the Tri-Cities and married this worthless POS and had gotten back into this Pentecostal mind frame and but last I heard, she dumped that guy too. And so I haven't heard from her in probably 16, 18 years. Um, let's see, what can I tell you about other folks in this thing? Um, there was um, a uh, large gay man came as uh, uninvited, but certainly welcome guest of uh, a guy and he he was um, a black man about six foot two and handsome uh, very well spoken and people were just charismatically attracted to this man went and asked his advice on all kinds of things during the weekend Sunday morning he came down and reported that he'd had a dream and that God wanted him to go to college and finish up uh, he had just finished a stint of alcoholism and eating out of dumpsters. So uh, we became friends, and as the years have gone by, I've lost interest in the LDS Church, have asked to have my name removed from their membership roles, and um, Roscoe is the long-term friend that I have maintained out of those weekends. Um, my brother Duncan and I were planning to do a backpacking trip and Duncan thinked out on me. So I asked Donna, you know, if I, um, if I asked Roscoe if he'd go backpacking with me, do you think he would take it wrong? You know, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. And Donna said, oh, stop being a sap and call him up. Boy, Roscoe and I, we had a very good time. Um, little side note here. Damon was eating at McDonald's with some of his high school buddies, and one of them said, you know, if you were camping with some of your friends and you woke up in the morning with Vaseline smeared all over your asshole, would you tell anybody? And Damon says, boy, I don't think I would. His friend says, would you like to go camping? So I'm sorry to say that that imagery was in my mind when I invited Roscoe, but we had a hell of a good time backpacking.